Someone out there has probably been waiting a long time for a mixer like this. Today we've got the Behringer Flow 8 Bluetooth controlled personal mixer and interface, and it's coming up next. These videos are made possible through viewer support on Patreon, by visiting dcsoundup.com, and by sharing the channel with your friends. Every like, subscribe, and share really does help the channel keep going. The Flow 8 was just announced by Behringer, and they're pumped up about it. I've had this one for a little while now, so I could share it here with you. Obviously, they sent it over to try out and test. This is not a paid review, but you should know where the gear comes from and that I do appreciate when any manufacturer is willing to provide gear that otherwise might not make it onto my radar or onto the channel. So the Flow 8 is a mixer and an interface, an eight input mixer with four mic preamps, two of which can provide phantom power and two of which provide combo jacks for quarter inch inputs. Channels five, six, seven, eight are quarter inch pairs. And there's an additional stereo channel where the USB or Bluetooth audio playback is routed. The output side is equally sorted for such a small mixer with two balanced XLR outputs, two quarter inch tippering sleeve outputs for monitor one and two, a headphone output with independent level control and the ability to act as a USB audio interface for both computers and iOS devices. I think they probably could have included a eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on a product like this and nobody would have been too uh, concerned about it, but the quarter inch is easy enough to adapt for anybody that's just working with uh, more consumer grade headphones. As an audio interface, 10 channels are presented to the computer, each of the eight analog inputs as well as the left-right mix. Conveniently, that is tapped off before the output level control for the mixer, so you can still get a good healthy recording even if you don't need so much of the level uh, in the room for live reinforcement or going to a speaker system or anything like that. I'm not sure we're at critical mass yet for where everybody has enough USB-C host devices capable of powering a two amp draw like this one. So hopefully we'll see some movement on that in the future. But right now this split approach, even though people look at it, I've already seen people, oh, why didn't they do USB-C? It works well for iOS and the kind of devices that I currently have sitting around. Either way you lean on that argument, this is an eight channel mixer and interface that runs quite happily on a USB battery providing phantom power to two channels and being controlled remotely via Bluetooth all at the same time. I'll have some more numbers and hard data experiments and things in a future video for how long a typical battery will last under those types of uh, normal situations, but I'd expect it to do quite well. The mixer so far runs silent as far as I can tell. It only gets slightly warm after being on for a number of days. So this could be a very attractive option for a small video production studio or a location shoot. The Bluetooth control aspect means you don't need to be right next to the mixer to make adjustments, but unlike other mixers we might be used to, you kind of have to use the app to get at all the features. The approach they've taken here is to make features like EQ, high pass filter, compression, and panning only accessible from the control app. Although this does limit what you can control from the physical surface without the app, I honestly can't imagine how they would have fit controls for all this stuff into this footprint. And if they had done it through the screen, it wouldn't have been very good. I think they've made some smart choices of what to make based in the app and what to include on the surface. This mixer does seem to be aimed at users that aren't making those adjustments constantly. What they've focused on here is allowing you to make those adjustments, allowing you to store them, and then giving you a whole bunch of options on recalling them as snapshots, either via the app or via a foot switch that you can plug in. And that foot switch can be set to either control the effects or recalling snapshots. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can imagine this working for, for a small act playing multiple instruments or any number of other things. And of course, don't forget, you do have the playback from a computer coming in on this additional channel here. So it's a really interesting segment of the market that they've aimed this at for folks that might have a use for different presets and such a small footprint. The internal effects are quite well rounded with a bit of adjustment possible to fit your taste on each one of them. You can see the different banks of them here. They are a lot of fun to experiment with and like most built-in effects that I've come across, being subtle with them will get you really far. 
There is a compressor on each of the input channels. It's a one knob style compressor. And there's also a one knob limiter on the main and monitor outputs as well. I kind of worry that more harm will be done than good with these types of one knob uh, dynamic processors. But I think overall it's better to have them and just not use them than to not have anything at all and need some sort of dynamics. Uh, again, subtlety will take you a long way using these just to round off the rough edges. The main and monitor outputs also feature a nine band graphic equalizer that offers some help taming feedback, I'm sure. And again, is light years improved over typical small mixers like this of the past that would have no output EQ at all. Uh, you'd normally have to buy an output EQ and patch to it before your speakers or device that you're playing back through. Uh, so that's nice that they've included it. Nine bands is better than no bands. So great uh, addition there. The input EQ is a fixed four band style with a variable high pass filter that goes quite high. So it's a very comfortable range there for dealing with all sorts of stuff with that high pass filter, snare drums, hi hats, you're gonna wanna get up a little higher than you typically would for a vocal. And they've given you plenty of range there. Control from the app is possible in two ways uh, over the EQ and the firmware updates so far have been refining the experience and accuracy of the touch controls already. Of course, you can rename add icons and choose from presets for setting up channels and they've included an auto gain function that allows you to set the inputs for one or all channels automatically with just a few button pushes. They're clearly looking to make this an easy experience for less advanced users and I think for a podcast or small music act there could be a lot of potential here. The ability to control effects or recall scenes using a foot switch could really be useful to a lot of people and I could see all sorts of small performances making use of some of these features and a effects and simple remote control uh, scene changes. The Bluetooth allowed me to get typical distance away from the mixer. It disconnects when I go upstairs in the house as pretty much all Bluetooth devices do. So no surprises there, no miracles either. A lot of what you think about this mixer and its abilities will probably depend on whatever they choose to charge for it. And at the time of filming this, I don't have a clue what that's gonna be. So we'll take another look at this one down the road a bit after they're shipping, after they get out into the world and people get to really use them and see how they do. If you have any questions about them in the meantime though, definitely let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hit dcsoundup.com forward slash shop for the latest stickers and other fun stuff for sale this week. I'll see you next time.